In this video, we're going to talk about all the things that you can do to limit the amount of heat in your camper van so that your air conditioner has a fighting chance to do what it's supposed to do best. Summer is finally here and it seems like every year temperatures are getting higher and higher and every year putting an air conditioner in your camper van becomes less of a luxury and more of a necessity. At Van Life Outfitters, we carry many of the most popular and highest rated camper van air conditioners on the market. We also have a handy camper van air conditioner comparison matrix that allows you to compare all of those air conditioners and choose the one that's right for you. For this video, when we talk about camper van air conditioners, we're referring to DC 12, 24, and 48 volt rooftop air conditioners that run off your batteries rather than the more traditional 120 volt AC powered models. These are considerably more energy efficient and tend to be a lot nicer and much quieter as well. Let's set some realistic expectations. Most DC air conditioners top out at around 12,000 BTUs or lower. Automotive ACs are often twice that. Under the right conditions, these units are able to keep you comfortable, but they can't work miracles. It's nearly impossible to really cool a van in a hot climate when parked in the sun. You might be able to move the temp down a bit, but your AC will run constantly and you'll be fighting against the sun. This is one of the reasons solar is somewhat incompatible with powering an AC. You really wanna be in the shade when trying to cool your van. In our testing, most of the DC units can create a delta of around 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit between the air temp inside your van and the cooled air coming out of the vents of the AC unit when running the compressor. If you will be in the worst case scenario conditions, such as a hot climate in the sun, you might wanna consider a split unit where the condenser is not on the roof baking in the sun, such as the Nomadic S1. Let's talk a little bit about choosing the right color for your van. And this one is fairly simple, but a lot of people don't consider this when they're buying their van. White reflects heat because it's not absorbing any of the wavelengths of light, but instead reflecting them all. On the other hand, black absorbs all wavelengths of light and converts them into heat. For the coolest possible van, go with white, followed by silver, and then some of the other light colors that will reflect more wavelengths of light, thus keeping your van cooler. If you get a black van, it will handicap your cooling ability from the get-go. The next most important factor in keeping the heat out in the summer and cold out in the winter is insulation. Having a properly insulated van is one of the best investments you can make in your camper van, and we feel it is mandatory. At Van Life Outfitters, we strongly recommend 3M Thinsulate. It is superior to wool in almost every measurable performance metric. We have a blog post about why we like Thinsulate. We also have a blog post on our preferred method of insulating a camper van. But whatever type of insulation you choose, be sure to take your time and do it right. Insulating your van properly can be a fairly low cost, high return way of improving the climate efficiency of your camper van. Now let's talk about limiting the amount of windows in your cabin. You're building your first van. It's exciting to think about all the possibilities. You're dreaming of going to campgrounds and BLM lands and seeing this beautiful country. You want lots of windows to take in all the vistas, right? I totally get it and I have a window in my van too. Having a window is important for ventilation and airflow just as much as it is for enjoying sunlight and views. But I would encourage you to be conservative with the amount of windows you put in your cabin. Glass is difficult to insulate and generally reduces your van's ability to regulate temperatures and the overall climate efficiency of your camper van. Also, think about it. In the city, you're most likely going to have your windows covered, and when you're camping, you're probably gonna have the windows covered at night. So the only time you'd have your windows uncovered is camping during the day. And most of that time, I would imagine you're probably gonna be outside enjoying your natural surroundings. But again, I think having a window is a great idea and Van Life Outfitters sells the best windows on the market. Just don't go too crazy and turn your van into a greenhouse. And always use window covers. This one seems fairly obvious, but having a window covers is imperative for any camper van owner. It's a low cost solution that can drastically reduce the amount of light and heat that enters your van through the windows and windshield. Not only do they help regulate the temperature fluctuations in your van, but they also add privacy and improve sleep. Van Life Outfitters carries a wide range of high quality, affordable window and windshield covers for most models of camper vans. Pre-cool a heat soaked van and maximize your vehicle AC. 
If your van is heat soaked, a phenomenon where your van is so hot that the heat is literally soaked inside the walls and permeates the entire van from the insulation, walls, and cabinets, try to cool the van down while you're driving by maxing out the vehicle AC and running your rooftop AC on maximum cool. Typically, your power system will be charging from the van alternator while driving, which minimizes the impact of the rooftop unit's power draw from your batteries. If you have a vent fan, you might even consider turning that on, pulling hot air out of the van while the AC units are running for a few minutes. Then, when you get to your destination, most of the heat will have been drawn out and you can put up your window coverings and change the AC mode into low or eco to maintain the temperature, choosing the right electrical system for your van. Many of the technologies and products available today weren't popular or even available when I got started in van life back in 2016. For the most part, people were putting in two vent fans and a bunch of solar on their roof. 12 volt air conditioners and the battery banks needed to run them were very expensive and not yet mainstream. But today, the prices on these products has reduced while the technologies has improved, causing much wider adoption into the marketplace. Because air conditioners need a large battery bank to run them for long periods of time, new technologies have sprouted up to charge those battery banks. One of the biggest advancements that Van Life Outfitters has helped to pioneer is the adoption of secondary alternator charging systems. We have a number of blog posts, videos, example wiring diagrams, and product bundles that go into how these systems work and why they are advantageous. But simply put, they use a heavy duty alternator to harness the generator under your hood your engine, to charge the battery bank quickly. Having a secondary alternator charging your system virtually eliminates the necessity for solar panels. Solar panels cannot compete with the amount of amp hours produced by a secondary alternator that can produce between 180 and 250 amps per hour of driving, rain or shine, day or night. For example, you could recharge a 600 amp hour battery bank in as little as two and a half hours of driving. This would take several days with solar panels and you'd need to be parked in the sun to do it. That's a little bit of a catch 22, isn't it? Baking in the sun just so you can charge your batteries to be able to run your air conditioner doesn't seem like a very intelligent solution. I've owned three vans over the last seven years and I can honestly say the biggest difference in moderating the temperature inside my van was putting a wall with a door between my cabin and cockpit. On my first van, I had a curtain. On my second van, I had an insulated curtain, and on my latest van, I've built a wall between the cabin and the cockpit. The difference between my first van and my latest van is night and day. The majority of the heat and cold fluctuations in your van are going to enter through the windows and windshield in your cockpit. I understand that a lot of people want to take advantage of the driver and passenger seats with swivels. It makes total sense to add a little extra seating and square footage in your van. For me, the benefits of separating these areas outweighed the benefits of utilizing this seating area. And I was able to creatively incorporate seating into my floor plan. I can still use the seating area up front, and although I can't swivel the seats, I still theoretically have a private seating area. When I combine window and windshield covers with the wall, virtually no heat enters the cabin from my cockpit. Well, that does it for this episode of Van Life Tips and Tricks. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Definitely head over to vanlifeoutfitters.com for tons of blog posts, videos, product reviews, and tons of other useful content about building a DIY camper van. And as always, thanks for watching, safe travels, and we'll see you next time.